Hi everybody, it's Sherry with Blessed Baubles. And are you ready for another episode of Rich Box Poor Box? I know I am. I think we're gonna be able to finish the series today, but let's see how it goes. There's not much left in the boxes, so we'll have a look and see, okay? But before we get started, let me let you know how to purchase. If you see something you like and I give a price for it and you wanna buy it, just send me an email at capecodebaygirl at gmail.com. But when you send the email, I need you to give me these four pieces of information. The video name with the episode number, the timestamps of when your pieces show, a brief description of those pieces, and the prices that were given, okay? You don't have to wait till the video's over to email me. You can email me at any time during the video or during your time watching the video, I should say. I don't mind getting several emails per video because I understand that people want to get their email in as quickly as possible. So no problem with any of that. And what else? Um, thank you for that. You can find the timestamp by pressing the pause button on almost any device that you're on, okay? So thank you for that and my technology genius sign. Please subscribe and like and click the bell so you'll be notified of my next video. Thank you very much for that too. Okay, well let's get started. We usually start with pour box, so I'll leave my sign out there. And I've done other videos in between, so I've had to put everything away on my desk and set it all up again for rich box, poor box. But this is where we left off, so I've got everything all set up again. This is our earring board where we wait, the mate waits for its mate. And there's a couple of earrings along the bottom that I took back out again to set us up for rich box, poor box. So, okay, here it comes. Let me get the pile ready. And I'll talk about that polka dot box in just a minute. Ooh, another puka shell. The last one was nice. And it sold right away, too. And we got some tchotchkes. Oh, I think something broke. So the series has been so much fun. I probably would have used different Shop Goodwill stores than I did. Because for Rich Box, I used a place that I don't usually buy from, so I was not sure at all what I was going to get. And yeah, I think I would go with a more consistent, expensive um, store next time that has consistently beautiful jewelry. Oh, this is another one of those Tory Birch. It is, it's a necklace. Okay, that's cool. So if I had to do it over again, I would go with a different Shop Goodwill store for my rich box. Because the one that I got, I am not used to and I haven't bought from them before. So I don't think it was a great comparison because of that. I think rich box, had I ordered from a more a store that I knew more about, we would have had a much better comparison. And for over 500, rich box has been a little bit of a disappointment, but then again, we're not at the bottom of the box yet, so we shall see. I guess my point is, for one box being $25, this box here, and the other being 500 Maybe there would have been a much wider gap on how nice things were. But, like I said... I'm just chattering while I'm emptying the box and giving you my thoughts so far. Lots of little pieces of something, some art glass. Not too many little, little things. This one broken thing, that's a cool looking earring. So wait for your mate, wait for your mate. You know you gotta wait for your mate. Oh, my voice is not really <clears throat> on par. I used to sing all the time, but I haven't for a while. And I noticed yesterday when I tried to sing a song, I'm like, oh my gosh, I sound terrible. 
Whereas I used to sing, you know, professionally in the church, Christian contemporary music. And when you don't use your voice, you lose it. So I need to practice again. That's a beautiful tiger eye earring. And it's going to wait for its mate. I bet you it is sterling. That looks like some kind of necklace. Let's see. Getting down to the end of the bag. I'll show you the bottom of the bag here. Make sure I get everything. So a couple little things. Another broken something. Oh, a little ring. Oh, look at that ring. I hope that's going to be real. And then I always make sure to not throw any little, like, loose things away. Just in case something's broken and we need it later. So I do see a couple little things in there. I'll get those later. But that's it. We're done with Poor Box. So we can say goodbye to Poor Box. This is our last unboxing of it. Goodbye, Poor Box. And that was a pretty big box. I can't really get it all in the picture, but yes, a lot of fun. Okay, let's see what we've got. I've got a light in my way. All right. How's the microphone sound? Good? Okay, so let's get a dig in. This looks like a beautiful abalone sterling silver pendant it is i see a marking right there oh all right let me see okay i see it says str for sterling and then it has that cute little i don't know what do you guys think like a bumblebee mark if anyone knows who that maker is, I would love to know. But it's beautiful. It's a really pretty piece. There's another shell that's a lot like abalone, or it's a type of abalone that's much more brilliant, a lot more blues in it. I think it's called a puai shell. I think this might be that shell instead of a abalone. Just absolutely stunning. And I wonder if it's older, being that it's marked STR. So that's lovely. I've got a lot of sterling silver chains that I can put that pendant on. Really pretty. Ooh, wow. Look, we have a, a Zuni shell inlay, turquoise inlay. Pretty sure. I'm not seeing a mark right here on the back of it, but we can test it for sterling. And I'll show you the front again. It's a little bird, I would guess. Isn't that beautiful how they put the, um, let me get a little pointer tool. I'll use this. So this right here is, I believe, spiny oyster. It's like a reddish color. And then we've got turquoise, mother of pearl, onyx, spiny oyster again, and more turquoise, more mother of pearl. This is really a beautiful piece. Look what it took to make all of that. And they had to wrap the sterling all around every little section. Phenomenal work. That's exciting too. So that can go on a chain. All right, what about the ring? I might have to pause and go give this a clean. But it looks real. Okay, let's see if I can see a any mark inside? Yeah, I might have to clean it so we can look at it together. Every time I start recording, my stomach growls. It never does any other time. Oh well. I hope you can't hear it. It's going. Let's just see. Oh, it's like a gold tone. I thought it was going to be silver. Look at it coming to gold or brass. And it looks really, truly set, like really prong set. It's not glued on to look prong set. There are four prongs. There's four prongs and there's, 
gemstones around it too. This is so beautiful. I hope this is something cool. Okay, the next thing I'll do is see if it's magnetic. It's not magnetic. I'm gonna have to get Miss Prissy on the job. Miss Prissy, are you awake? We need you. I'm really excited. We have a gemstone, we think. Move this stuff over. And I've noticed that heart right there. I can definitely see that out of the corner of my eye. It's beautiful. All right, let's get everybody in the picture here. See if we have a gemstone. It is quite dirty. I shouldn't test I shouldn't go by what I get when it's this dirty, but Oh, she's not even done warming up. I'm sorry, Miss Prissy. In the meantime, I'm just going to take a brush and just gently brush it. And just see if I can get a little bit of stuff out. But I'll give it a proper cleaning in a little minute. So this is exciting. I really love this. You know what I'm thinking? What is that stone called? A mystic topaz. Isn't that what a mystic topaz would look like? I haven't had too many of them and I don't know where this is going to go. Could be glass. It's going to glass, so it's probably a beautiful piece of glass. Yeah. Oh my goodness, you can't even see. I'm sorry. It's just too much stuff to focus on for my camera. And yeah, it's if it was topaz, it would be going way up here, but it's going to glass. So I'll give it a good cleaning. It could be a tourmaline. After a clean, it might be a tourmaline. So we'll have to see about that one and give it a metal test, but very interesting. I don't want to spend too much time that it's coming up like a brass color, but it's so dark on the outside. So, you know what? Maybe it is brass underneath and it's got a dark, like a gunmetal coating and it's a beautiful piece of glass, I would think. But we'll figure that out for sure. Now, this is a little bangle. What I look for is, of course, marks, but I also want to see if there's any seam lines like that. If I see a seam line like that really quickly, I tend to think it's not sterling. So that's my first really quick look. And then I'll check it with a magnet, and it's magnetic. So that is a pretty bangle, but it's not sterling, so we won't have to test it. Next, look at this. A glass heart. The colors are really wild. Let me see if I can get the sun through it. Oh my gosh, that's beautiful. It's like a real heart. That's very, very interesting. I love that. And I love how it's hanging this way. Now, I got a new flashlight, a little one, just like a regular light, just to see how things look on when regular light hits them. That's wild. You know, like if we had some Vaseline glass or something. That is really wild. So that's how the regular light affects it. And then I have my little black light to see how it affects things like if it was amber or something. It seemed to be much more affected by the light just a beautiful piece of art glass. I don't know much about how they make it, but wow, that's gorgeous. Really neat. Oh, I could look at that for hours. Now, do we think that this went with all these beads? I don't know. I don't even see a piece of string that would have made up that necklace unless I don't know, something earlier on in the box. What did we get out of the box? We got this chain. 
Yeah, I don't think it would have all these brassy things on it. I'm just trying to figure out what this is. Looks like a piece of wood. Okay, then we've got this bracelet. I've got quite a few of this kind of stuff in here, and sometimes this can be Bakelite, so I tend to have to test every single one because I'm not really good with Bakelite yet. Oh, and here's another one of these. So someone bought the first two that were in the box, and if they want the third one, they're welcome to it. But there is, oh, there's a little brass thing missing on that one. So, and these I tested, they were not Bakelite. So I've got a, let me see, this is gonna go to craft, I think. So that's decided. I need to move this stuff over so that I can start to give you prices and things. So let's put our Zuni piece up there, a ring, a little shell thing. And whatever this is, we'll look at now. Let me just gather these up. The more we can get out of the camera, the better. There are some pretty beads. I don't know what this was, but put it aside for now. There's one more over here. Hmm. Pretty cool. Okay, bag. Yes, I do right here. Okay. So I was talking about the bracelet. It's a beautiful marbly butterscotch color. It is eight inches. And I'm just gonna go ahead and say four dollars on that one. It's kind of light. I don't think it's bakelite, but We'll just say four. Now let's take a look at this. Millefiori heart. Yeah, this is still gonna give me trouble with the camera. Okay, poor box. I might have to just take you right off the table here because we are not getting a good focus and it's not the camera's fault. It's all the things that are in view. Okay, Millefiori heart pendant. And it's got red, white, blue, turquoise, yellow, really nice. It seems to be on an older brass hook or bale. That's a really pretty piece. So that can go on a necklace. Now, we wouldn't want to put that on a sterling chain, right? Maybe a nice gold chain. So if you love this, and you'd like for me to put it on a chain, let me know. I'm looking over at my gold chains right now, like, what, what can I just put it on? But there's nothing, like, right here right now, but... Yeah, we'll figure that out. And then we have a little earring to wait for its mate. Wait for your mate. You know you gotta wait for your mate. That is a black glass, like, faceted. Okay, I've gotta be organized. Whoops, and that's another piece of something that fell off of something. Now, it looks like we have a best friend's necklace that's magnetic with the other half. But I don't remember seeing the other half in this box. And the chain is worn, so that's going to go to craft. And I do not have a craft jar ready today because... We've got lots to do to get ready to move, and I'm just trying to get through the video and make it pleasant. We have a mother pearl ring with genuine pearls in the center, and these are usually on a regular type metal. I haven't found too many that are on sterling. So that's magnetic, so I'm going to say it's not on sterling. But it is mother of pearl, real pearls, and it's in beautiful condition. That's a lovely, lovely ring. The size is, it's sitting at a seven and a half. Wow. The focus, there we go. Sitting at a seven and a half, but as you can see, it's very adjustable. So it could be worn 
I wear a nine right here, so I just pushed it on that finger and it's a nine. It's so pretty. I love it, love it. I'm gonna say uh, 16 on that. Lovely material. And you can't beat, I say it all the time, you can't beat a ring that can be sized because you can wear it on one finger one day, the next finger the next day. I'm gonna leave it on for a bit. Okay, this is a cutie. Oh, now I've, I've gone through so many pieces. I think we had another bracelet just like this. It's adorable. It's got a faceted look. It's on a stretch. Excellent. Very cherry red. And I'll say three on that one. And then this cute little cherry red earring. So adorable. And guess what? He found his mate. You found your mate. You found your mate. Now you gotta go on a date. <laughs> hey, that wasn't bad. You found your mate. Now you gotta go on a date. These are hefty. They're like ceramic. I think they are ceramic with a faceted crystal pink color bead above it. Really sweet. Let's check out the earring wires just in case someone needs to know. They are beautiful. And on these, I will say, I'll do $5 on those lovely earrings. I feel like I'm dropping things because my camera is more at a slanted angle. And I'm gonna shut this door. I wonder if all that sunlight is confusing the camera. Let's see if it helps. Let's see if we get a better focus. Not really. Okay, we'll get through it. All right, now the Tory Birch. Yep, that's a Tory Birch choker necklace. And this opens up. I forgot to show you how it opened up last time. Yeah, there's like a little thumbnail spot here. Opens up and you put like a Fitbit thing in there. They, they go for a lot online. Um, no one bought the bracelet, but that doesn't mean they might not want a choker or that it might not do well on eBay because it might. But it looks never worn. I don't think it looks like it's been, you know, buckled and worn. Looks brand new. Lovely gold tone with the brown. I have no idea. I'm going to say 45 on it because I know they go for way more. We'll see if someone takes up that one. Okay, this is pretty. This is acrylic, but look at the color. Isn't that fabulous? You know I'm thinking I want to match it up on a Friday night <laughs> matching jewelry bags, but we'll see. If it doesn't sell, then I'll match it up, but it's so pretty. So we have faceted deep blue beads then they get larger as they go to the front, ending in this teardrop shape. But around some of them, there's a cluster of other faceted beads. My goodness. So a cluster, a bead, a cluster. Lovely, lovely color. Gorgeous. So if you can't wear heavy jewelry, but you want something that looks heavy, looks crystal, then this would be for you. Let's get Buster Boy out so you can see how it looks on the neck. Because the rounded shape of our neck changes how a necklace falls so much. So I do always like to put it on the neck, you know, the roundedness and the way it falls. It's going to be different than it would on a flat surface. So there you go. It's got a long, gorgeous Y drop on it. And it has a crackled look to it. Now I know. In the beginning of jewelry, I wasn't sure if that was cracked or not, but that is how it's supposed to look. The chain is in great shape. Beautiful. I don't see any wear. It's a Rolo type chain. So from right here to here, I'm going to measure it. 
and it is 20 inches. It looks like you might get another inch out of there if you had to, so 20 to 21 inches on that beautiful blue piece. And I'm gonna say $12 on that. It's just a lovely color. Okay. And my microphone fell down a little bit. So let's see, how am I gonna do this? <laughs> Oops. Wow, I hope that just didn't make a terrible sound in the microphone. All right, let's hope it stays still. There's a lot to do with recording. Your equipment, your lights, your microphone. You gotta be aware of what people are hearing. Pretty bangle, I'm gonna look around again spin it around i see that little seam i love the texture on it though that's going to be a nice bangle it is magnetic and then we have a yellow one so what i do with the other silver tone gold tone and yellow yeah they're not really like a set that could go together so i'll just put them aside now, what is this? This is a gold tone chain, and it looks like a white enamel chain together. Like one chain is white enamel, the other is gold tone. So that's unusual. There's not a lot of pieces made of white enamel chain. And then it comes down to this double tassel thingy. But it looks like some of it's coming off so on this part yeah see how that is i don't know if it looks a little sparse i don't know if that can be slid over it does look like it can be fixed but if you like it and you want to fiddle with it it does seem to be in pretty good condition otherwise it's got tiny little faceted crystal beads silver tone i'm sorry white enamel chain and gold chains as part of the tassel and the color of the crystals is a milky white a pink opaque and a silvery gray and if i spent time getting all these chains to hang down you could probably tell better it's a very long chain this is what it looks like when it's being worn. So you got the one white chain and the one gold chain. That's a really nice looking necklace. Really is. I think that chain situation on the top is a really easy fix. So let me measure the chains. It's got a big lobster clasp that does have a little bit of wear on there, right there. So if you're cooling out about this one, it's 28 inches long. And I'll just say five on this because even though that's an easy fix, it does need a little bit of something. So five on that long pretty piece. Then we have a pretty big clamper bracelet. Nice hot pink color. It's thick. And it's got rhinestones. Are they all there? I think so but I'm not sure why the pink is showing through. Let me see if that's gonna wipe off. Now, come on phone, when I back away, why aren't you following me? Isn't that strange? It's being a little stubborn phone today. I'm not used to that. My phone's really been doing great. I'm reaching for my little wipey thingies. Real quick, I want to see if that pink stuff is going to come off so you know what you're getting. Because I thought it was the pink coming through, showing through from the bracelet, but it's not. It's like on the surface of it. So I don't know about this one. Might have to put it to big craft because it's really not cleaning up that well. So there's no stones missing. It is pretty, but it's going to go to big craft. 
If we have time, I'll get out the big wearable and big craft bags I've got made already. So we have a red bangle bracelet, nice rich red tone with that little bit of faceted look again. Probably an eight, but let's make sure it is an eight. That's pretty. I'll say $4 on that, it's in great shape. But I see something red in here, maybe it'll go with it. Oh, this is cool. So a multi-strand seed bead necklace. I'm really trying to learn how to open necklaces with the side of my thumb. I kept doing it with my fingernail and I'd always have this split in the nail and I don't want that anymore. Okay, we have larger red seed beads, small tiny ones, clear, silvery. Look at these like lit from within pink ones. And it comes down to this dyed howlite pendant. Very nice looking. Looks very Valentine's, very, the, the red and the silvery and that little bit of pink just makes it come off as a pink piece. That's lovely. And that does match. The color goes really well with it. And hey, what about, look at this. You just saw me do one of my color matching bags right on the camera live and right in front of you. That is wild. That's how I would do it. Only I'd be digging in my jewelry bags and everything. This is so cute. I have to do this as like a matching jewelry bag. I can't not do it. The earrings match. The necklace, the bracelet. Do we have another pair of earrings? Because I always like to give two. Oh, it doesn't matter. This is so cute. I'm going to say... Individually, if you don't like the set, I'll say we'll do eight on that. And whatever we did, I don't remember the prices of these, but it was probably three and five. So eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. It's about $15 if you add up all the pieces as a set. It's not bad. So you can buy them individually or as a set, but I'm gonna wrap them up as a set. And the necklace measures 20 inches fully extended. So that was really neat. Lots of fun. Next we have a leather bracelet with the peace sign. This has a crack in it. So that's gonna go to craft. And look, we found the mate to this cute little earring. So now we can have a look at it seems to be on a black metal and is black faceted glass. Wow, what's up with the camera? What am I doing wrong? I'm gonna try something. Yeah, I'm just not sure. I don't usually have this kind of trouble with the camera. I used to zoom in, like you touch the screen of the phone and you can do this and you can zoom it in. But I found that when I did that, the camera never acted right after that. So I stopped doing that and I started bringing the jewelry up to the camera. That seemed to solve every problem that I had with my phone. Excuse me a minute while I clean up. But today there's something disturbing its focus. Okay, we've got this Lovely faceted glass earring. Yeah, it's got to be all about the light. It has to be the issue. Let's try this. Yep, it's always the light. So there you go. A little cluster like a flower. And here's the other one. They are adorable. And they are on a black metal. They're in good shape. And for these little babes, I will say we'll do five. They are lovely. So you see how that is like this light right here is 
almost like bleaching out when I get close. So there's something that I'm not doing right. Does anyone know about lighting and things that could give a little advice on that? Because we need things to work right. Wow. I just don't know. And I really need to get through the video and not delay. So this is not fun to have it not focus. Okay, we have a faux pearl necklace. Now, I know Kenneth J. Lane makes this triple color pearl necklace, but I don't think this is one of them. It is a magnetic clasp. We had another necklace with magnetic clasp that was pearl. It was really well loved. But this one has some stones missing, and I'm not sure what's up with the, the way they tied it. Maybe that's just how they did it. So it's not terrible. I don't think you'll notice the couple of stones missing if you love it and wanted to wear it. But that would be up to you. Let me show it to you on the neck. I mean, if you wanted to wear the clasp in the back, of course you wouldn't see it. But if you wanted to wear it as a pendant, you would. So I am going to say Make sure that works right because oh there we go you have to like put it in the right place I'll say five on that I think it's a beautiful necklace if you're handy with crafts you can pop a couple of stones and if not then it's only five so I think that would be fair okay really nice Look at that bleaching me out again. Black bracelet with gold tone in between. It's probably Lucite, has a great stretch, just needs a little dusting off like everything else in the box. And it will look fabulous. The gold tone in between is very nice too. Just needs a little wiping. So that's a great piece. It sits at about a seven. And of course it's a stretch. So I'm gonna say six on that. That's a gorgeous bracelet. Okay, then we have a faux pearl bracelet. Really, really good stretch again. These are acrylic pearls, very lightweight. They're not glass pearls. So I'll say $2 on that. And we have another one of these. So the last one we had of these with the older spring ring clasp, the acrylic beads with the gold beads in between, a very classic look. It was more on the pink side, but this is orange. This is a very lovely orange color. Maybe, maybe a touch of coral color in it. Pretty, pretty, pretty. It's 16 inches long, and isn't it so sweet? I love these. So that's that one, orangey coral color. And the gold beads in between are in great shape. I'll say $4 on that one. Pretty colors. Ooh, this feels heavy. And I can already see that it's signed right there. Looks like it says Napier. So let's go with the loop and see. Oops, where to go? Napier. Yep, it's a Napier. Lovely. Okay. Whoops, I'm covering up poor box. Sorry there. So gorgeous Napier necklace. Tiny beads. I'm sure they're glass by the weight of this. And, oh, this is so pretty. So they have, I need to get you a really good focus on this because you've got to see these beads. And my light has these legs on it, so if I move it around, it might not work right. Okay, so they're almost like, um, I want to say like a pumpkin. They have little little ridges in them 
and now I'm bleaching out again. Okay, turn that light away. Thank you guys for being so patient. I really don't know what's wrong with everything today with the camera, but I just want it to come out right. Wow, it's just doing this. Okay, we need to know what to do here. Maybe there's too much white. Come over this way. So they have that kind of shape to them. And then they have gold and black, gold in between. So I just really wanted you to see the shape of that bead. It needs a little cleaning because it's just so pretty. Gold tone beads. All right, you've got the close up. So here's how it goes these melon sort of shaped beads, black, black and gold, black, black and gold, and then little gold ones in between. It's a nice long necklace. Lovely, lovely. Just pretty. I mean, it's not faceted glass, it's shaped glass. That's different. I have not seen anything like that. And I bet those earrings would look really cute with that. And this might, but that's kind of big scale. So let me measure this napier. It feels lovely. It's nice and heavy with the glass. And it's on a lovely little gold tone chain. Can you see the chain in there? Right in there. And there's that movement that you need on a long necklace. You need to have room for the beads to move around so that if you wanted to double it or any way that you wear it, it's got to have room to do that or it's going to crunch up the beads. So here's how it looks on the Buster Boy. Let's do this the right way. We will do it like that and do like a double layer. Just gorgeous. What a nice necklace, Mr. Poorbox. I really like you. measures 32 inches. Oh, that's pretty. If this doesn't sell, I might have to keep it. I'm going to say 25 on this. It's. I wish you could feel it. It just feels so quality. And look at that. So 25 on the Napier glass necklace. This is a blue, blue goldstone bracelet. I think so. No, you know what? I don't know if Goldstone is supposed to feel acrylic or not, but they feel acrylic and they look like blue Goldstone. It's not on a great stretch. That's the issue. The tassel's lovely. The rondelle is lovely. Not on a good stretch. So, oh wow, I feel like it's too pretty to go and craft. Um, I'm just going to put it to craft, so that's where that one will go. Thank you, Mr. Bracelet. You did a great job, our missus. This is a beaded, uh, I'm sorry, wooden beaded bracelet in two different colors, like a black and a, a nice soft color wood. And we'll say a dollar on that one. This is a leather bracelet. I do see a little color there that looks to be coming from the buttons. Not ever worn, but also just has a little bit of, needs a little clean on those metal buttons. And this says something on it too. It says JK something. And this, oh boy, I'm going to have to polish it quickly so we can see what it says. I'm trying some new polishers. I have my old standby, you know, the pink side and the white side, and I love that, but I thought I'd try these blue ones. They came like 10 in a set. Let's see if I can show you the bag. Yeah, that's the number and that's how they come. And I like them, they're polishing up fine. But what I find is I can't, let's say, take a piece that I would polish. 
When you go to polish something and you do this like with your fingers, it doesn't really, <laughs> it like sticks or something. It's not really conducive to that type of polishing. So I'm not loving these yet. I'll give you a better report on them. They do polish. Look at that. But I find that my fingers don't stick to the rag enough to control what the rag is doing. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. And while I've got that out, let's see on this one how this is going to polish. I know it's going to be beautiful. It's all sterling and it's signed. And I wouldn't mind polishing the back of this pendant because it's a pendant. If it was sterling on this side, I would hesitate to polish it because sometimes people like the patina. So I won't take any more time with this. I just wanted to show you these new newfangled polishing rags. And if anyone watching uses these, let me know what you think. Um, I just want to find something really good for sterling because I need to do a lot of sterling videos and I got to get the jewelry ready. So, one last time, it says STR and has a little bird kind of thing. I just thought I'd show you now that it was a little cleaner. So, that's going to go to craft. But what was I doing? Oh, that's right, I was trying to read JK by Thirsty One. That's what it says on the button, JK by Thirsty One. Don't know. I don't know if I'm missing something marvelous. This is nice. This is very nice. I like the brass and the pearly white beads. I'm not a fan of these bracelets, but this one I think looks great. It just has a really pretty boho look to it. And I like it. It's very cool looking. I like this one a lot. Nice, very nice. I think I like the white and the brass, and I'm going to say five on that. Nice looking. Then we have this bracelet. These feel very smooth. We have gold tone beads in the front. And let's just see if these are onyx. They feel cold, and they feel like they might be onyx. But the color of these other beads tells me not. So they are going up to like the glass area. I'm not sure, but that's that one. And I'll say $2 on that stretch is great. Now we have, oh, we have the other earring. So we've got two of them. It does appear to be sterling. Here I go with the polisher again, just to see. Because I want to know if it says something on the back. It does look like it's signed. No, it's just ripply, or stippled, I should say. Um, the wire does look like it might be marked, but the easiest thing to do on these is going to be to test them. Really interesting green color. Here's the other one. Very cool. Let's see if it tests as a stone. No, it doesn't. So I'm going to have to figure out what this material is in here. Could just be glass and they're really cool looking earrings, but we'll put those in the sterling pile to test them. Now we have this puka necklace. This is cool. It's on a barrel clasp. It needs a little clean. And the last one we had had a lovely abalone pendant on it. And that's the thing about these. When you find the real puka shells, which these are, you can take a really cool pendant and put it on there. And it just really dresses it up. Like, let's just use the earring as an example. You've totally changed that necklace to really dress it up. After I saw that last puka necklace, I thought, that is so pretty. And I would do that on any of them. Let's see. I don't have anything to put on this one. 
but you know what I'm saying. You get the idea. This might even have come off of here. We don't know. So I'm just going to leave this as it is and say $5 on this. And if you want to dress it up with something, you can. It does have some yellow beads next to the clasp. I think it's a good quality one. Uh, did I give a price? I don't even remember. <laughs> I was so busy thinking about a little pendant on there. I'll have to go back and see. So this is maybe volcanic beads. Not sure. And then it has some artistic verdigris and a wing and a clear bead here. So not sure if there's any interest in that, but it is pretty. And I'll say $2 on that piece. We've got a bracelet here. Is this shells? This looks like some kind of shell. But I don't know. And there's like a little hole in it. Okay, I do not know. I don't know because I'm seeing layers in there. See the layers in that little drill hole? And why would there be a hole there? No idea, folks, why that has that on it. Then it has another artistic verdigree bead. So I bet you it goes with this. I do not know. It is pretty. Stretch is great. I'll say a dollar on that one. Okay, what's left of Core Box? These are, I think, wine glass markers. Like, you know, mine's purple and yours is green. So those are going to go to the um, craft jar, craft box, bag, whatever. Craft, yes. Now, we have... A necklace, it is, let's see, it's got a couple of charms. I don't even remember if we went over this on the video, but it is a sterling silver chain. It says 925CH, and then 925 on the clasp. It's a nice little tiny sterling silver chain with these beautiful little flower pendants and i love how one's bigger than the other just a pretty scale and then they're marked again right here 925 so that's a really cutie cute necklace so sweet very very sweet i love the simplicity and just the delicateness of the chain and then these two pendants. That's a pretty one. Now this one oh, it just got flipped a little bit. And I've got it the wrong side. This is how it looks on the neck. This has a crystal in the center, so does this. And this has some pink enamel on it. Oh, it's like more of a rose gold frosty on it. So gorgeous sterling silver necklace. It is 16 inches. And I will say we'll do $16 on that, okay? Put it right back in this bag. And I saw someone leave the um, clasp outside of the bag on someone's video. Maybe that helps it to not tangle. But there's that piece. And another piece we found. I'm enjoying this ring on me. It's cute. This, I think, is gold over sterling. But let me check. Nope, I'm wrong. This is a Monet with the older sister clasp. So that's a cutie. And the sister clasp... If it is one, it will open up like both sides will move. I gotta get it focused. Oops. <laughs> All right, let's just do the clasp. So when you go to open it like that, that's a sister clasp. 
So this is an oldie. It's a gold tone or gold plated. I think Monet plated their stuff. Um, box chain. And it is signed with the little hang tag. It's in very good condition. So interesting, a Monet box chain. It is 18 inches. Do we have any pendants that might have come on it? I don't see any. No. Nope. So for the Monet, I'll say $12. And I'll put it right back in its little bag. Nice chain. And they just last, they really do. This I think might be the gold over sterling. Because this is marked 925 and I did test all this stuff off camera. I wanted to save some time, so I did that. But this is marked 925 right there. And it's gold over sterling. And it too is a very delicate box chain. Gorgeous, gorgeous piece. So you get the look of gold without the price of gold. And you have an entirely precious metal necklace. It looks like that. So sorry about this focus. My camera is making like a little sunshine like icon. It's trying to tell me that the light is not right, but I don't know how to fix it. And I don't know what you're hearing, but my microphone <laughs> fell again. Oh, wow. Okay, we have a beautiful Vermeil necklace. Before I put it in the bag, it is... This one's 18 inches. And I will say 20 on that chain, because you do have gold over silver. 18 inches. Okay. That's it. I think, I can't remember which came from Rich Box or Poor Box, so I'm not gonna say there's no more earrings until we look at Rich Box. But this just came out of Poor Box. So that means there's only one of those. Oh my. It's a beautiful tiger's eye. I mean, really, really gorgeous. It's really well cut. Look at that. Oh my, that's a beautiful one. It does look like it's marked 925 on the earring. Sometimes if you see that flat part on an earring, you can look right there and it'll say 925. If you're out in the wild and you're looking at things, you can look for that flat part. So it's sterling silver, tiger's eye, but there's only one, but it's beautiful. I'm gonna say 10 on this because if someone wears one earring, you have a hunk of faceted tiger's eye on all sterling. Sterling little bead balls on the bottom. It's so beautiful. So I'm going to still price it. I think it's so worth it. So that's that earring. What else do we know came out of? Yeah, I'm just going to hold off on the others. But we've got this. We have this ring. Someone wanted this ring, but I'd never heard back from them. This is the one with the letters on it. And there was lots of opinions on that. But regardless, where'd my ring thing go? Ring thingy. I'll give you the size again. It is almost to a six. So I would say the wideness of the band if you're a five and a half, five and three quarters, this would fit. It is solid sterling. We looked at that before. And it says sterling inside. So it's an older ring. And I'm going to say we'll do 20 on that. I had it at 25, but I'll go to 20. Let's see how that goes. Now we have these earrings. These things, I'm sure, are sterling. we got to figure that out. This chain is not sterling that we found. And we've got to figure this piece out. Although I think I already know. So let's get poor box done because we're already getting into time. 
Now, let's see. These do look old. Let me test this one here. No, I think it's copper underneath. So we've got silver plating. But let's test the wires. Sometimes the wires can be sterling. And that will make a difference if you need precious metal like I do. And no, those are over copper as well. So we have silver plated for sure. And we have a green glass. I think it's looking like a gemstone. I mean, regardless, they're cool looking. Just great looking. I will say seven on these nice, chunky, good looking earrings. This guy, I hate to bother it because I know it's going to be sterling. And I'm checking the bail again. But I'll test it because you guys need to know. But that's an awful lot of work on that beautiful piece. So I'll test the bail a little bit. And oh, I want to be so careful. Test the bottom of it a little bit right there too. Probably ought to focus. So that's that piece. Then we've got this guy. He's marked all over the place. And we'll test him over here. And this, I mean, why test it? It's brass. It's going to test his brass. I think I'm just going to have to say this is a glass ring. And we know that's brass on that finding. So nothing else to be tested. We have this gorgeous thing. I don't know if this came from Rich Box, Poor Box, or what, but it's beautiful. It really looks like it went with this as a set or goes with that as a set. I know it's got to be sterling. So we'll test the earring as well and hope we find a second one. So I'll test the earring up here and the wire. I like to try to test it where it's not going to be worn, you know. So we'll try there. No, it's too hard to hold on to. So that's the earring. So beautiful. I was so excited when I saw that. I'm like, yes, those are mine. <laughs> but I don't see a second one. And I don't know. I don't think we need to test that. Although it's interesting. Glass. I don't know. We don't have the second one. Maybe I shouldn't fuss over it. Okay. All right. We'll do these for now. So we've got the Zuni piece here. This pendant here. This earring here. I'm going to use my... 18 karat solution because it's the easiest and I like it. So you only need to put a little bit on the stone. Sometimes I see people test sterling and I'm not picking at anyone, but they might do, they might scratch a really long piece and really take too much of the jewelry and then they'll put a little dot on it. A little dot of acid on it and I'm like you know you didn't have to scratch all that off so if that's something you do and you just haven't thought about it before then I hope that helps so what we have is definitely sterling on this Zuni piece definitely sterling on this this one is looking more like it's on alpaca metal which is interesting because Looks like it should go with that. So I will we'll test this one more time and I'll show you what it does. It kind of bubbles up a little bit and then looks like it's going to turn blue and then goes away. And that's kind of what alpaca does. 
So I'll we'll come nice and close, get it focused, and see if I can show you what it does. See how it foamed up a little and then it went away. So that tells me that's probably alpaca. Still a beautiful era, and I would still like to find the other. So, cleanup time. And perhaps I'll come right back with a couple of chains for those two pendants and give some prices. Okay, I got it done. First, this is a Zuni piece. It's quite old. And it can be called a Thunderbird or a bird. It is all that I said it was. I put it on this silver chain, sterling silver chain. It's 18 inches. I didn't want too big of a chain. I have all different sizes of chains, but I didn't want anything to take away from that beautiful work of art. So there you go. It's an 18 inch, um, you know, normal link chain. It's a nice vintage one. It says, 925 on the clasp, and all of these have been tested. I gave it a little um, polish really quickly and then had to come back to the recording. Um, just looking at the clasp, 925, but it looks like it says something else or it might say sterling. 925TH maybe for Thailand. So 18 inch chain with the Zuni pendant. I looked up the Zuni pendants really quick too, and they go for just the pendant, 123, one was 95, one was 119. They are, they say they're 100 years old. I guess if they're truly from Zuni, then they are, but I'm not an expert. And the, those were without the chain. So I was surprised how much they went for but I am going to add a chain, so I will say 85 for the whole necklace. So this is for just the pendant, and I looked for as much similar as I could. Same size, same amount of inlay, same whole structure, and that's what I came up with on these three. And these do not have a chain, so I'm going to sell it with the chain sterling silver chain and with the pendant for 85 okay so i hope that's a great price if you are a collector of this type of jewelry you'll love that and if not that's okay i'm not loving listing on ebay lately but one thing that does go really well are the zuni pieces so you let me know if you love it and you want it Send me an email right away, otherwise I will um, see what I can do. Maybe hold on to it a little bit. So that's that one. And I put the abalone shell, I finished polishing it, I put it on this nice sterling silver box chain. And this one is marked 925 Italy and 925 again. And all of my sterling silver chains have already been tested before they ever even go in here. So just so you know, that's all sterling for sure. But I love that on this one. And this is an 18 inch chain. A little bit more weight on this chain because it's got a bigger pendant. Now these were pricey too. You can buy newer ones that are made in China that aren't, I'd say as quality. And maybe we don't know if they're shell or not, you know. So you can buy cheap ones. But this is an older one, and it is signed. So the ones that were similar were 49 Those were the, the cheaper China ones. And then some of them were 159 and some were 60 But those were not with a chain. Mine is going to be with a chain. So why don't we say for this piece... With the chain i'll just do 65. that way you get the beautiful shell 
a nice substantial sterling silver box chain at 18 inches, and you have a completed necklace. Okay, so that one's done. I love getting something done like that. And I think that's it for pour box. Except for this, I tried to put it on a chain, but I would want to come up with just the right color. So I think for this beautiful piece of glass, I'll say $18 on that. Then we have this, I mean, what do we say about this? It's stunning. I probably could have put this on a chain too. If you want a sterling chain, let me know. I have all different shapes and sizes, so we'll have to exchange some pictures or things. But just for the heart, I'm going to say 15 on that. I mean, my gosh, I think that's a steal. And that's it. There's nothing really else to talk about on this. Oh, there is a pair of brass earrings, brass hoops, beautiful patina on them. They are a little bit, how do you say, they have like, um, wait a minute, one looks copper and one looks brass. So I don't think they're both brass. I apologize for that. One's copper and one's brass, so they're going to go uh, in the craft. That was going to be a nice pair of earrings. Okay, that's it for poor box. It was so fun. Um, should I give a price for the ring? It is a beautiful stone. It's at a size six and a half. And my goodness, six and a half. That would fit me. I'm going to say 15. I think it's worth 15. Because even if you're wearing it to the brass, it's going to look gold color. Or just the stone alone is really pretty. So I hope that's a good price, 15 on that one. Okay, and next we'll come back with Rich Box. So this is what we've got left in Rich Box. I think this one might take us a little more time because I kept telling you there were little things in the bottom. What I did was I took some of the little things out of the bottom and looked them over. They're in this bag, and I'll tell you about those, because I had to save us some time on this one. Lots of little, little things in this one. So hopefully that saved us some time. That's an earring that goes with that necklace. Remember the cat necklace that everyone loved? All right, I have to see if the other earring is here. Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay, so again, this is Rich Box, and this is the end of it. And wow, even though I pulled some things out of there, that that's coral. Okay, I just want to see if the cat earring is here. Oh yeah, we've, this is a lot of work to do. Take it all out. There he is. There is the cat to the necklace. So if you're watching and you bought that necklace, you've got to know that there's matching earrings. Oh my goodness, they're precious. All right, I'll put those aside. It's going to be a little bit of a mess at the bottom. I think I might have to just come back when I've sorted out all these little things. Oh, that looks good. Hmm. Yeah, I'll have to come back when I've sorted this out. I'm glad I grabbed some things, but I thought I was ahead of us. And I don't think so. And then there's little bitsies under there. Really wild that they didn't put this in a bag, right? It's in just a bare box with a piece of paper. So, and you know me, I don't want to lose any little tiny thing. So I'll go to work on this and be back. I think what I'm going to do is end the video here. I know that we've always done rich box and then poor box in the same video. But I think it's just going to be much too long. So this episode is going to be all about poor box. And then I'll get to work on what's left of rich box. And come back and the next video will be all about rich box okay 
So if you see something that you loved, please email me, email me at capecodebaygirl at gmail.com and let me know the video name with the episode number, the timestamps of when your pieces showed, and the brief description and price, okay? And don't forget on your way out, give a like and subscribe. I'd love to know if you're a new subscriber, and I always love to know if you've been a subscriber for a while. So thank you so much for that. I look forward to your comments and to talking to you all about this series and what's to come next. There's lots of beautiful pieces in here. I cannot wait. So take a quick look and, <clears throat> excuse me, and you know what I'm going to say. We'll see you next time at the Bobbles. Bye.